All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Listen, I am joined here by a special guest. We are going to be interviewing him and letting him tell his story. And the reason why I did this, right, is simply because I want to talk more to the people who I'm talking to. That way I can understand not only where you guys are coming from, but I can help me tailor the message. That way I can help you as much as I can. I also do this because I want you guys to realize that you're not alone in the way that you think. There are other people out there who think similarly, if not exactly like you. Because let's be honest, the way that we think, the way that we think about life and attacking life, it makes us the black sheeps of societies. Not only society, it can make us the black uh, sheep of our families. It can make us the black sheep in general. And so when you're the black sheep of something, if you're not around a bunch of other people, then you're going to believe that you're always an oddball out and how you think is weird. And I'm here to tell you that the way that you think is not weird. It's different, but it's not weird. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that there are places out there, communities out there with people who think exactly like you. And it's your job to put yourself in position to get that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Brother, can you please introduce yourself? Oh, um, so my, my name is, I'll go by, I'll say I'll go by AZ. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just, I, you know, I've been in this, I'd say in this space, more or less, you know, it's kind of, it's a broad space, but I've been in there for, i say a uh, few years, but I've been red pill since 2020. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, I kind of know about the black pill. And, uh, you know, I've, I've really been fascinated trying to figure them out. And so, you know, ultimately I could do something about it, you know, try to help, you know, right. use my gifts and stuff. So, yeah. Okay, bro. And tell tell us how old you are. Uh, so I'm eight. I'm 28 years old. Um, so yes, yeah, right. I kind of feel it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get <laughs> where I want to be, and I feel like I'm behind. And <laughs> and, and I time. feel that for for because yeah. at the same time I'm also 28, and so what okay, I tell yeah. guys and I tell guys this, and it could be a cope, it could be, but I say yeah. that if you wake up to the world or reality uh, before 30. I think you're you're ahead because I think right, right, okay, most yeah. guys most guys don't it's not until most guys in their 30s realize like oh wait I wasted my 20s because mm -hmm. they realize they could have spent 10 years gathering information trying things out building up their stats and all that other exactly stuff, yeah. right? and so yeah. when I, I say that anything that is progress in this if you're that before the age of 30 bro you're you're still ahead of the game and so that's awesome yeah. and so before we we hit the record button we were actually talking a little bit and I thought it was very important for you to share your story. You said mm -hmm. that you were a virgin up until what age? Yeah, so 25. Actually, the beginning of 20. I had a, it's like I had a crisis right before 2022 hit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, then right after that, you know, it started happening for me. I'm like, all right. It was hard, though. There's a lot of issues, but, you know, okay. couldn't okay. even get it up at some point. <laughs> oh wow like was, so so, yeah, so, yeah. so kind of walk yeah. me through talk to me like what was going on from mm. let's say let's say 16 okay mm. 16 to 24 that mm. hindered you from not only getting into a relationship but mm. uh um having Just sex women, oh, yeah. like, okay and so, so, and so let I, me let me say this first hold on let me say this just because i'm not I don't want to make it seem like being a virgin is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, right? right, right? right Especially right. if you're religious. But if you're, but again, don't hide behind the fact that it's like, oh, bro, you know, I was a virgin. Exactly, but yeah. It wasn't religious. Right, right. You just simply couldn't, you know what I'm saying? So for the audience mm -hmm. out there who's still a virgin, bro, be, keep being a virgin if you're waiting until marriage, of course. But guys out there who are actively trying to get laid and you're a virgin, okay, yeah, nah, we got to, <laughs> we got to talk. <laughs> okay. And so you said it was basically from 16 to 24, it was you just not talking to women at all? Yeah, so it, I mean, Christianity is a big role. I'm not here, you know, down on down on you know any organized religion. You know, for me personally, I'm not kind of I've gone kind of beyond that and built my own kind of philosophy. But you know, like very you know shy. I've always struggled with being comfortable, you know, in my skin around other people. It's just like I felt like I couldn't articulate myself the way I want to, the way I you know I feel like I can deeply inside or by myself, you know. And so it was like, I've always struggled. I've been on the outside looking at, you know, at school. You know, it's just like, you know, I never really had any like deep friends. I did meet my best friend at uh, undergrad, but the, even undergrad, uh, you know, architecture school was so stressful, um, you know, all nighters all the time and, and stuff like that. And it's like, 
you know, I'm, I got to go to different places because of internships. It was like a co-op program. So I'm going to school and going to internships. That and, was and dope, I, but, you know, and with I was all of really that, lonely, you know. With, with all of that, it was simply not the fact that you couldn't get any attention or, you know, uh, girls yeah, weren't into you. It was that, simply yeah. you weren't putting yourself out there at all. Yeah, I just wasn't. Yeah. Was okay. Just, and so, yeah. so like the, the, for me personally, like how I think about that in like the social world, right? If we take mm -hmm. this back to high school, it's like almost as if you were the kid in the back of the classroom who just didn't mm -hmm. interact with anybody. Right. Would right. you say that's kind of on point? For sure, for sure, yeah. Okay, and so yeah, and I was yeah, I was gonna say. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say real quick. Uh, like I, I, you know, like I said, I was that kid in the back of the class, but I felt like I knew there was a value inside of me just because of my personality type. Like I was always pretty. I knew how I thought was different, and and I felt I knew that that was like a value that I had. So I was always pretty good at like rap and stuff like that. You know, at the senior year, I did like a we had they. Had like a you know you know in the auditorium they have like all the creative writers do their like their like spoken word pieces or whatever and you know I did mine I was rapping I had the whole school like you know going crazy I'm like what that's that's Azure what is him you know all right so uh, you know I, it's like I had that in me but it's like only in this context I you know can I express myself right. so I struggle with that kind of curse. So that, okay. So, and again, I think a lot of, there's a lot of guys out there that struggle with that to where it was yeah. on the, it's, it's not that you were so like you were socially awkward or anything like that. It was more so like everything, I shouldn't even say socially awkward. It was more so like everything that made yeah. you great, desirable, attractive was more internally and right, you lacked right. the tools to be able to oh, express yeah, exactly. that externally. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. So, so got it. So we're at that point now where we don't have any of these tools. So l let me ask you this, brother. Did you have your, uh, your father in your life? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, was he, he was there. Um, uh, he, but you know, he works like second shift. So he was, he was always pretty, uh, pretty, you know, he, you know, he's kind of fussy. You know, he, he get, he kind of, you know, get, get mad at me for little things here and there, like at home. I didn't connect so, as much with him as I did with my mom. So I think that okay. definitely contributed Got to it. some of my struggle, you know. Got it. Yeah. So I, it sounds like it was more of a, a passive relationship. Like he was there, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to yeah. disrespect him or nothing like that. Oh, yeah. He, he got he got me in the college. He got me through school and stuff. Right, so right. Work hard and stuff. So, yeah. But there was, there was no type of bonding like – um if you go out with your yeah. dad, it's like, hey, go talk to this girl, or hey, let's go hunting. So we, you oh, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. There's nothing exactly, like that. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Okay, got it. And so just kind of yeah. walk me through. It's like right, right now, you know, we're the we're the kid, 16 to 24, where we're like, you know what? I have it all in me, but I don't have any of the tools. I don't have the skill set. Mm -hmm. Right? What changed yeah. after 20 or 20, 24 or 25? Uh, so yeah, you know. I'm, was going through all that depression, insomnia. I de I deconstruct. So I overcame my addiction, right? In uh, 2019, what? that kind of what? Uh, porn, right? So that changed. That kind of changed, like it, you know, obviously it fixed my brain, but it kind of made me. I kind of overcame it without like this whole like Holy Spirit thing. I'm like, okay, well, I was praying to God the whole way, and I'm thinking He's the only way one is going to help me out because I'm so desperate. But I kind of got to the other side of it and kind of, you know, I started deconstructing. Like, all right, well, I don't know how that just happened, but I'm interested in evolutionary biology. Like, what was I just, what was I under, you know, these past, this past de decade? Like, you know, the female nature, you know, like, what is this, right? It's like the male nature, because, I, you know, we're not talking about that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So it's like, um, yeah, it's this, you know, ended up in a red pill you know, 2020, as I was in grad school in Arizona, beautiful place. And I'm just like, all right, I'm, I'm renewing my mind to an extent. I'm, I'm letting new things in. And it just started clicking my mind. This is, you know, this is what we are out here. You know, we're, we're you know, like, we're, we're more than just kind of these, you know, meant to just follow these, you know, beliefs that systems were kind of, we're still evolving, you know, as, as you know, as, you know, looking into the science of it. And so it's like, that really resonated with me. You know, I'm just kind of rethinking everything and 
kind of creating these new first principles for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was like, I, you know, once I graduated, I, I did my kind of magnum opus design out there. I did some kind of crazy stuff. You know, um, might have to, might have to show, show, show that they're interested, but <clears throat> yeah, you know, I came back uh, to my hometown after a year and a half. <clears throat> and that's where I really just got into dating with the, the mentor, or the, you know, the group I was in. <clears throat> I had joined. Sorry, my voice kind of gets sick. I mean. <clears throat> You're good. So, so okay, we, we hit, <clears throat> so essentially yeah. we hit college we found the red pill. The red pill was like, you know what? It introduced you a lot of ideas, a lot of philosophies that yeah. shook up the worldview that you had. Mm -hmm. And that allowed you to start making some replacements. You're like, okay, this doesn't serve me. Let me go ahead and use this. So, and, mm -hmm. and that kind of allowed you to, to create this new person, right? Or at least express yes. a, a different version of yourself. So, right. so kind of, yeah. kind of walk me through, if you remember, what tools did they did the red pill give you or what philosophy did the red pill give you yeah. that kind of inspired you to, to make some changes? So <clears throat> the guy I particularly followed, um, he, he really, um, he really, he was kind of broad, but he was a veteran, you know, he went through that, you know, all that. I never went through that, but he went through that. He, you know, he came back and he, started a business, kind of lost it all because of his P PTSD that he wasn't dealing with. Ended up going to like uh, like South America, whatever, started doing, he did, uh, you know, did some uh, entheogenics, you know, um, and that That's really kind of opened his, so those are, those are like, you know, the psychedelics is another word, ah, okay. term for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, he, so he did that and I just kind of, he was able to really turn himself around and get back on his feet and Dude is like super jacked, and you know he looked like the like an alpha or whatever. So it's like, yeah, he was always into fitness and all that stuff, stuff. And yeah, he you know really connected with his message, and he you know he really helped as far as he helped me get into the dating. He helped me you know get laid and stuff, uh, but particularly online dating. So he gave me he gave me these tools to kind of understand really how they move, and and because it's like especially with online dating. You know, it may not be for every guy, but it's definitely a good way to place to start, especially if you're better at, you know, kind of you're better at writing than you are sometimes, you know, in person, like on the fly. Um, because what that was, was it was like it helped me to kind of see the trends and how women are, you know, especially on the apps. And it's like you see the you see the what they do over and over again through, like I said, the repetition or, you know, right. and. And you learn more about yourself and how you respond as well. And it's like you realize it's, there's certain things that they're, yeah. So essentially it's like you you found this guy in the red pill space and he he went through his journey. You were inspired by that journey. And then you're like, yeah. okay, I'm going to start taking his advice. And what he, mm -hmm. he essentially did was he gave you a tool set that's like, this is what you need to do in order mm -hmm. to make yourself more attractive, more desirable on dating apps. And then right, you right. did that. You listened to this guy. And then mm -hmm. you started seeing uh, some results. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, kind so of, was... and, and, and this is important because there's a lot of guys out there who they will refuse to invest in themselves. Exactly. And they're just like, this I'm is, not going to put any money into all. this. Yeah. Awesome. It's like, that's, it's like, they're not going to put any money to themselves. They're not going to learn. They're going to find it. Or right. my, my favorite is I'm going to Google it for free. You fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. Right. But so yeah, it's like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> and so you you went from that vested into yourself and you got us something that gave you a certain desire kind of walk me through that process of yeah mentally you were like when you first got the information what did you what what, what did you feel internally or were you just like freaking i pay for it's, it it's not it's not easy because like you know obviously if you grow a blue, blue pill that ass to me for me it was like yep i felt i kind of felt a bit of a a crisis like an existential crisis it's like okay mm -hmm. you know there's this other side that like human nature of like life that like you know obviously with women as well it's like that i just didn't all my life like i wasn't taught in it. like you know and, and i'm seeing it unfold in front of me and i'm just like it kind of gave it kind of made me kind of depressed it's like maybe question even my path yep. and it was like you know so i had to struggle with that you struggle with your insecurity that's the hardest part you know, especially with the rejection you know, if you're rejection sensitive and stuff, and it's like, 
you know, <laughs> every little thing just kind of makes you like go for a tailspin. And the one thing that you have is like that script or that structure that, that you know, that mentor is providing. It helps you kind of, it helps you as best as it can to kind of take some of the emotion out of it and just kind of follow a thing. So that does help, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, it was like, you know, you just go through, you go through um, the reps of it and you learn like, certain things that that stick out you know amongst you know others you so know hold, you on, hold, learn. On, hold on mm. you said something very important you said you go through the what yeah you go through the reps of it and you well hold on one, one really, more time just in case they missed it they, you go through yeah. the what you go through the reps of it egg, egg, fuck yeah. exactly yeah. this is what i'm telling yeah. guys over mm. and over again there is no one one trick pony to everything it's something you do over it has to it has to ingrain in your mind exactly you have to see that pattern yeah Yeah. and one of the things that that he said that i went through personally as well that nobody really talks about is the Mm -hmm. transformation from going from that really blue pill mindset to Mm -hmm. understanding a completely different worldview that would make you in this case more so either a douchebag or a villain in your old ways of thinking. And nobody talks right. about the psychological battle that you yeah. have to go through because again, mm. on one hand, you're like, oh, I shouldn't do this. But on the other hand, mm. it's like, bro, take the advice and do it. And then you have right. to keep battling back and forth before you realize like, wait a minute, this old version of myself no longer serves the purpose of what it is yeah. that I am trying to do. And you have to get rid of that. And that's just a process yeah. that you get through repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay, keep going, bro. And it, it is hard because, like, you don't know, especially if you hadn't gotten late yet, there's kind of this, like, it, I always say it's like, it's kind of like, you know, you need a, you need experience in order to get a job, but they got to get a job first in order to have the experience. That's, you know, catch 22. I, <laughs> that's really what I, how I really, I, you know, explain that whole process because it's like, you know, it's like, it's like in your head, you're like, okay, well, what do I got to do to, for this to finally work, right? And obviously, he, he kept with me until I, you know, it was working, you know, until it worked several times, right? And it was like, I'm like, all right, like, it, it, you really, that's the hardest part because you don't know. And so it's like you live in that kind of unknown fear part of your mind. It's like, okay, I don't know, you know. And, you know, but then when it finally happens, it's like, it's, you know, it, it, there is something that shifts in you psychologically, you know, where it's like, okay, you know, and then you do it over again. It gives you that boost. It gives you the boost of testosterone, all that stuff, right? And uh, and then you start to realize, okay, so now I can kind of see it. When it, a lot of women say the same thing, right? and so once you realize, okay, they're saying the same thing, maybe slightly differently, you kind of have a relative like, okay, this is the kind of answer I gotta, you know, construct back, right? To kind of, you know, get past that guard, you know, get past, you know. Kind of, you know, stuff like that. It's like, okay, right, right. You know, and it's like, yeah, you know, there's this, it's this balance between like, you want to be assertive and, and direct to what you want. But at the same time, you want to, uh, you know, she's going to either give you kind of a resistance where you kind of reassure her, um, or she'll give you a shit test where it's like, okay, you have to kind of, you kind of have to respond in a way that, that, you know, that, that doesn't allow her to kind of like lose respect for you, right? Exactly. It's like that's the hard part too. And I think yes. that, that's mm-hmm. that's the whole point is like whenever you get these tools and you're testing it out. The, the whole reason yeah. why we talk about reps, reps, reps is because the first time you do something, it's gonna it's not, it's not going to work. Maybe it will if you're lucky, right. but it's just not going to work. Then you have to go back, not only face the rejection, mm-hmm. right? Then you have to right. go back and dissect like, what the fuck did I say? What did I, what went wrong? Then you have to right. change it up and then do it again. This is why like, really, I, I have. It really helps to have a coach in this sense because like. A hundred percent. I can't say I would have, I would have never done that myself. So, like, and, and, and I was, was the same way. Because he was able to see each, every single conversation. And see exactly where I was like messing up. It's like you know he could just get me on track that much faster, you know. Right, and and that's why it's like mm-hmm. this is why whenever you guys see me have like a harsh video or I mm-hmm. you guys say like I'm being mean, it's like I'm not, bro. Because like this, this mm-hmm. is the shit that's hard. This is difficult. Yeah. Not yeah. not trying. Not trying is easy. I just have right. to not show up and not do anything. Actually going uh-huh. through the fire multiple times. That's mm-hmm. hard. 
And so that's yeah. why it's like, I'll, I'll be harsh, but like, yo, bro, like, come on now. Because again, I know, we know what hard actually looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of, just kind of uh, jump ahead a little bit, bro, where it's like, yeah, we, sure. we went, to, went to the guy, he was helping you out. You're getting all these tools. You're going through the reps in again. He invested into himself, extremely important, and then got that help. Once he got that help, it cleared the way for a lot of things. Kind of walk us through the moment to where you actually, the, the girl who, um, uh, I guess, took your virginity. Just kind of walk us through that that whole game plan, okay. how that happened. Yeah, so <clears> there <throat> was actually, a, so I'll, I'll start with one girl who was like, and she was actually, <laughs> she was like, she was so uh, she was similar to my personality, and it was like the I'd say it was the best date I had because we just mm -hmm. were compatible. And I'm like I, I messed it up, you know, kind of like I said, not knowing what I'm doing and being needy. And you have to you kind of have to go through that. It's like you really, you know, mm -hmm. and it and that was really painful. It was like I messed I messed up, and you know, like I call her while she was like on a job or whatever. And I'm, you know, because I'm thinking, okay, I'm, so I'm trying to, you know, move it towards like, you know, doing a thing. Wait, right? wait, wait, wait. You say you called and, her uh, at her job or you called her while she was yeah, at work? Yeah, I called her while she was at work and did like, I, like I was just messing up, right? And it's like, and I wait, wait, up. wait, wait, I, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. We got, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I want to make sure this is clear, right? You, <laughs> you, so say like she works at a McDonald's, right? I'm not saying she does. Yeah. But let's say she worked at. She was, yeah, she had her you, career. you called McDonald's, or you called her while? No, she I call, I call her while she was in. Yeah. Okay, and oh it, my it, god, it, it messed, <laughs> it, it, you know, she was like, you know, she just didn't talk to me after but, that. I'm like, damn. Okay, so what? But she what was, happened, you know, what, what led you to wanting to call her while she was at work? What? Tell us about that. It was just my, you know, just emotions, like you know, like it was like. So what happened? I gotta, I gotta make this work because it was like this was the best date I've had after all these like girls mm. I've talked to up to this point, you know? Because okay. it's like, uh, hold on, let, let's stop it here. That <laughs> see that now I get it. So yeah. one of the things again, this is this is only something that if you're in the process, you know about. The, that one of the things that happens thing. exactly. Yeah. One of the things that happens is as you're going out and you're trying to talk to people, right? Let's say it's like reject, mm -hmm. reject, reject, reject. You get somebody and they're like, oh, okay, they're cool, but they're just not your type. Again, reject. Right. Then you find one, right? right? And then this one person, they again, it's just everything worked out so well. Right. That you're like, oh my, you this, this is it, right? Yeah. And I, I don't even yeah. want to call it one nitus, right? But it's like, it's mm. one of those things yeah, where it's like, it's, it's... it worked out, and you're like, yes, like, I, yeah, like you like get I one nitus after one day, yeah, <laughs> right? Because, and yeah. again, it's it's simply because you don't, it's it's either this or go back to all that bullshit that exactly. you were just going through. And right. so, what guys, you, <laughs> I'm laughing because it reminds me of like the things I used to do, but it's like right. the things that right. what happens is. is you you mess that thing up simply because of a lack of abundance, right? So okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it's just a lack of experience too. You know, it's like right, right. It's like so damn, if I was just if I was just further along, maybe I would have, you know, facilitated this better. And it's like damn, because I made. And then you realize how simple your mistakes are, you know. But in the moment, you couldn't think of anything else. You know, it's like so that's a big that's a big part of also down the line you know what i want to talk about what i want to talk so what about did you, what did you what did you what did you what did you say to her when you called her like what was it because you were like okay okay first thing first things first did she just stop texting you or you guys stopped texting well, yeah so i mean i texted her it was kind of like i shouldn't have done that because it was like it was too you know you, you don't want to be too sexual over text like okay. you know it's because like you you can risk like you know what i mean you can risk kind of pushing things too far or whatever you kind of want to be more euphemistic or whatever you know you kind of want to you know so so okay and, so, yeah. like, you gotta you gotta help me understand right so you guys were like mm -hmm. texting i'm assuming normal and then you yeah. sent a regular like risky text out of the blue well yeah it was like i want to take things like further you know with you like in that sense it was like and i think she is kind of more of a shy person herself she was shy to me i say and i think that just kind of like I can't say she was, I don't know if she's a virgin or not, but I, you know, I don't know how much experience she had, but she was just kind of like, you know, I could tell like, okay, I probably like made her nervous or something. And it's like, and then I was like, and then I sat there and okay, let me, let me try to get her on the phone and like, trying to like, what did you, you say? Know, smooth as, you know. So hold on, we're okay. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm having two different mm -hmm. things, man. I need you to be like more, more precise with me, mm -hmm. right? Is it, is it like a, like, cause I'm in my mind, 
in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's either one of these things. It's either one of those things where it's like, we were like, hey, like I like to, um, basically the relationship talk, where it's like, you know, like, what are we? Can we move on to the next step and yada, yada? Or it was like the sexual talk where it's like, hey, uh, I like to be my first time or some shit like that. What, which which what was it? What happened? That's what I implied in the text, but I didn't really get a chance to say much on the phone. Like, I just, I was like trying that's to. What, that's what I you said on the text. To- yeah, yeah, to an extent. Which, which like, one? The the first time thing? Uh um, relationship. Yeah. Not the not the relationship. It was like more of like I wanna implying that I want to try intimacy with you. So then when oh. I called her <laughs> and when I called her, it was like I was like, you know, you know, I'm trying try to I was I was trying to smooth over what I thought I messed up and then try to set something up or whatever. Mm. And I called her and she was at work and it was awkward and she, she just hung up my like, oh, <laughs> and then she just never you know got back ah. and stuff. So I'm like, I'm like that's, that that hurt. It feel like you know, yeah, you know that feeling in your gut like it's like somebody stuck a uh, knife in there or something. It's just like ah, you know. so. So in, in my mind, right there, I know what went wrong, right? So mm-hmm. I, I want to give my perspective on that, but I want to ask you. What do you think went wrong in that moment? Like, what was what was the what what went wrong, and then what should have you what should have you have done? Uh, I mean, yeah, I should have just. I don't know. I think I should have. I don't think I should have. I would have played it slightly slower. Like, I would have, you know, if I had, you know, obviously I can't change what I said that text with but I might have. I don't know. She she didn't respond, so it's like I feel like maybe I'll let her come back to me or something and confront her at a later date or something. But it was like obviously I, you know, was getting antsy and stuff like that. And like that was the mm-hmm. big thing I messed up on. And I tried to, you know, and you don't want to try you don't wanna you don't wanna double back on what you do. You know, you kinda wanna be assertive and 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 so it's like I'm not gonna, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I didn't mean something. Whatever, you don't want to do oh, that. Oh God, yeah. Come yeah, you know, you know. And so it was like, you know. But obviously, I was still, I still didn't know too much of what I was doing at that point. And so, but yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I think I would have just, you know, let her respond. If she didn't say anything, then maybe, uh, you know, just hit her again and say, let's let's talk about it, or whatever. You know, let's, you know. You know, get her when she's not at work, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, so, so okay, because like I said, you know, it's hard to know over text. That's the hard, you know, that's right. one so, of the big things. You can miss out. You can mess up on so many things just by not reading certain things. And so if you can, it'll set it'll set you apart by kind of getting on the phone and talking. You know, no even FaceTime. Or so okay yeah. so so just from from my experiences and then and again what i'm for the guys out there i'm not saying that my advice is god or anything like that it's mm-hmm. just from my perspective okay everybody's gonna have their own viewpoint yeah. on this so for me personally how i how i think about that is like that situation is the the first mistake for me was the text because right. and, and, and again i know i i want to say i know why you did it because mm-hmm. uh losing your virginity is uh seen as a special thing right? yes it's, it's, well, yeah at least it's, it's one thing, yeah. right? and so yeah. because of that you that was that was serving as the foundation of how you sent that text off where it was exactly, more like, yeah. it was like this is a yeah. very special <laughs> moment between us uh-huh. i can't wait to like i would like to start intimacy with intimacy with you and yeah. yada yada which is in, in, in the real too... world it's cr- it's not even it's not even forward it's just cringe yeah right because yeah. it's like cringe, if, a girl, yeah. <laughs> if a girl says that guys yeah. are like what the fuck we're like all right whatever Cool, like because mm-hmm. they're they're about to get laid. But from a guy mm-hmm. saying that to a woman, it's like what like what the fuck is he talking about? Like, what are you doing? Did she know right. you were a virgin before you said that? Or before you sent that? No. no right. I, and so I that that it. that made it even worse. Cause then, yeah. then you took off the the I have experience uh badge. You know what I'm saying? So right, right, then, right. <laughs> cause again, with with girls, and again, this is not every girl, but some girls, it's like women just kind of expect you to know what you're doing. Exactly. Even yeah, though most yeah. of them have no idea what they're doing, mm-hmm. but That's they expect you know what you're doing. Like you can't. Exactly. It's hard to like, yeah, to present so, it like that, you know. Yeah. Right, and so the the first thing on. was the text. So the mm-hmm. thing that I would have done if I wanted to have that moment, first of all, I would have scratched that moment entirely. I would even have 
like this is a special moment. I wouldn't have done that. But the 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 first thing I would have do is I would have set up the next hangout or whatever to yeah, see if she's even so down to hang out with her. Right. And then at the next hangout, uh tr tr push for sex. And when I say push for right, sex, right, I mean sex, like yeah. the the freaking the the mood is right, you know what I'm saying? Like not exactly, like hey, yeah. you're trying to okay. And see, this that, is, that's at this time I was still living. At this time, yeah, I, was I get it. My parents, I yeah, get it. So it was like I don't know. Something to her, oh, she was like, yeah. Something oh like no, that. that wouldn't that wouldn't stop me either. I would have hit the car, yeah. or I would have found like a stairwell yeah, or something. Car, yeah. <laughs> I did, I've done that. I've done that a few times. That was like pretty interesting. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah. so boom. So we got we hit that point. So now that we we went back, we understood what happened. Okay. So tell mm -hmm. us the about the next girl. What what happened with her? Or at least yeah, the so that, that took the the virginity. Yeah. So like, so he really helped me through that one because that was like. The, especially the lead up and it was like you know she was I had to you know you, you kind of you, you have to be really cued into the moment and you know kind of take the cues of what's going on in the environment logistically so that you could so that you can make it happen so it's like and then like she's always going to bring up these little excuses along the way and you have to kind of like reassure her kind of it's like there's there's a sales to it. and it's like this is what the coach kind of help me understand <clears throat> that connection and, and a lot of objections aren't really objections it's just kind of like a lack of trust they're not fully there you know with that trust thing so it's like okay you know he was kind of help. you know she was out with her friends okay she's gonna be back but she's got like a room but she's got like a roommate or whatever and i'm like all right well you know and so it was like all right so i'm gonna we're gonna you know so anyway you know <laughs> like I said, he's helping me every step of the way. Essentially, with my text I'm sending her. I'm like, all right, so that that worked out a lot. So I headed over there. I picked her up, <laughs> and we went back to her dorm. And you know, then I so there was nobody there. I'm like, all right, well, yeah, I think I think she was like, or I think she was in the other room. So so it's like, okay, we gotta be quiet or whatever. And you know, and so then we go in there. I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but all right. So we're gonna start and it's like you know and so i realized like you know when I was, you know like i wasn't even <clears throat> i wasn't even getting hard right? i wasn't even like and i and to the point where i couldn't even like penetrate right wow so it was like it was like I was, <laughs> So let's, so like, let's let's say hold on was that what do you think that was more like nervousness or was it because we over masturbation but I'd say both, and that's it. Kind of led me into like, okay, you know, maybe this is like, you know, you know, PMO induced erectile dysfunction, whatever you mm -hmm. need, you know. And so it was like, you know, so then I had to deal with that, and that's also what, and it was it was bad, like to the point where like I whipped out my phone to try to, you know, like when I was with Check her, the weather app, <laughs> to, no, no, like to actually watch, like watch whatever to. Try to get oh, get back shoot. up, and before oh. I stick it, before before I try to go in again, I'm like, oh, this is bad. Wait, were you? <laughs> would you watch that? You watch that in front of her? Essentially, like, oh my like was, god, <laughs> damn! Yeah, like, because I was like, this on my shit. Well, I gotta like, please or whatever. I go, okay, I gotta like make this work. So <laughs> it was bad. Oh my <laughs> god! Like, Ow! <laughs> right. <laughs> And let, let's let's use that as an example. This, this what I'm mm -hmm. telling you guys is that this that date this the danger of corn, man. That's Very real. Good. Oh my gosh, that's the, that's the mm -hmm. danger. So there's a couple things before we move on. I want to I want to speak on a couple things mm -hmm. that uh, guys should take mm -hmm. into a point. So a lot of you guys know that I talk about semen retention, right? Mm -hmm. One yeah. is for situations like this, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go through that. And two, it's because whenever you're on a certain level, like a streak, depending if mm -hmm. everything is connected, you have nothing else going on with you. That gives you a certain drive that helps exactly, you yeah, get that's laid, it, yeah. right? This so it's is like, actually like, this is also part of what led me into biohacking. Which I, you know, awesome. Okay, like, so yeah. so okay, let me let me finish my point here. So it's like mm -hmm. he, whenever you you're on that retention, it's gonna help you get laid. Like he said something mm -hmm. earlier that yeah, his yeah. mentor taught him that's very important, which is like a lot of this is like sales. That's an amazing analogy, and it's the one I always yeah, use yeah. because it is sales. I remember the yeah, first yeah. time I learned uh, Jordan Belfort's straight line system, 
and I used mm. that on a woman and I got, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> he was essentially what he was talking about where he was like, people yeah. are going to go this way, that way, just keep bringing them back to the line and eventually it'll lead to the sale. And it was the exact right. same way. She would say, oh, I have this friends and oh, I would have all these things. Yeah, they're not really excuses. Right, yeah. they're not excuse excuse or they're not mm. excuses. They're more so they're just like, oh, I'm not yeah, comfortable. Exactly, smoke screens. Yeah. And so if you're like, yeah, yeah, I understand that, blah blah blah, overcome objection, bring them back to the line. It's gonna yeah. get to the point to where again, everything is gonna be okay. Now, again, mm. for those guys out there who lack experience, this isn't pushing somebody to do something they don't want to do. This is helping right. somebody overcome the nervousness that they feel about the decision that they are about to make. It's completely yeah. different. Okay, yeah. so. So understand that, that that's, that's powerful. So again, being on semen retention is not only going to help you with the erection, mm -hmm. of course, because you're, you're always freaking horny. I say walking yeah, away is done. Mm -hmm. And two, it's going to help mm -hmm. you in that, having that killer instinct of sales, yeah. of like staying focused on the target. And when they try to go off, you you, mm -hmm. you handle it, overcome it, and then bring them right back to the center. And, leave and people it don't realize, life. yeah. And people don't realize, you know, it's kind of just tying the bio. And people don't like, like, how important testosterone it is. Like, I've tried, you know, different Okay, hold on, uh, hold on, bro. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, we got that. We got the girl. We yeah. used something, even though it was a little, a little cringe. I yeah. shouldn't even say a little, a lot of cringe. That, that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, you crossed the goal line. I'm essentially right. right yeah, yeah. I still uh, counted it. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> still counts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we got there. That's, that's okay. So, mm -hmm. tell me how. So the one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is like the red pill is uh, amazing to wake you up from blue pill ideology. It helps you yeah. get results in a certain way. However, right. what a lot of people don't talk about is the after effects psychologically uh, that the red pill has. And did you go, did you go through mm -hmm. something like that? You know, like what they call like the red pill rage kind of thing. It's is that so. So no, right? So for me, red pill rage is like that moment mm -hmm. to where you're starting to understand different ideas and you're like, no, no, mm -hmm. this doesn't work because your blue pill ideology tells right. you it's different. <laughs> but then you see it happen in real life. Yeah. And then yeah. that that's where rage comes in, right? So yeah. after the rage, it's like, okay, I accept reality for what it is, use these tools mm -hmm. to get what I want. However, mm -hmm. there's a dark side where it's like, as you're becoming this person or as you're using these tools, you realize that the person that you're becoming isn't somebody that you're proud about. Has that ever happened for you? Um, I don't think, I think only to the extent where it was like, it was wearing me down. Cause like, it was just so hard to keep doing it. Like my, I realized my confidence was like, I had these deep, like I said, these deep insecurities that wasn't being dealt with. So it was still like, it was just like, yeah, like I, you know, I'm not really worth doing what I'm doing. I mean, I'd like to be doing it at a higher level. I'd like to be a better, I would say like player, but you know, like I want to be able to build, you know, like I want to so, be better at this, obviously, but you know. Right. So talk yeah. talk to us about the, tell us about the um, the uh, insecurities. So what insecurities were you struggling mm -hmm. with or are still struggling? Yeah. So, you know, you know, like I was saying, I think, you know, it was like just that overall being able to, be grounded and centered in myself around other people, but particularly women in the in the 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 ish tests, right? It was like those are the those are probably one of the biggest factors, you know, it was like be, you know, because women are kind of designed to test you, right? And later I realized, okay, they're designed to kind of test your your subconscious strength. And so what I realized, you know, what I realized like, okay, I keep I'm not able to really be the confident, you know, rock or whatever that I need to present myself as. Or I need to express myself as. And it was like, you know, but just in general, I always struggle with just having friends and being that charismatic, even though it's, I mean, I feel charismatic inside, you know, especially when I'm rapping or by myself, but around people, it's like, I'm suppressing myself. I'm not able to really, even not even just say what, you know, what you want to say or think what you you know, but it's also just even thinking, being able to actually think of things in the moment under pressure. Mm -hmm. It's like your brain, it's like my brain just didn't work good enough. You know, you know, it was right. like, and I think it's just because of that anxiety that I've always had, right? Which 
led me to the biohacking, you know. So this uh, is what, yeah. and this this is a very common thing, right? I call these, um, and I'm not saying this was you, right? But I, mm-hmm. I call the, this type of behavior, I, I, I say they're BuzzFeed alphas, right? If you guys uh, know what BuzzFeed is, BuzzFeed has like very generic uh, content. At least the last time I saw them, they probably stepped it up uh, nowadays. Yeah, they had, yeah. <laughs> they, they would make content like, uh, top 10 signs you're an alpha male and then it's like you stand yeah. up straight when other people it's like it's like it's like right it's great if you're like a teenager but like yeah. as you start to get older it's like all right bro like we get what you're doing it's, it's freaking right. cringe like there's no calibration all right and so essentially what you were going through i say it's like a house of cards where it looks mm-hmm. great until it's tested and then once it's tested right. it just crumbles completely so is that was right. that kind of what you were going through as far as like shit tests and things like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean and obviously, you know, my my advice was really good. It was like, you know, you know, but it was just I couldn't embody that, you know. Mm-hmm. This is hard to it, it embody it. And then, like, obviously, I'm better with it when it comes to the text or to getting them off the app or whatever. So it's like I could do that. That was on point. But it's like, you know, you can't hide once you're in person. And so mm-hmm. it's like being able to do that on the fly is was always hard for me. It was always hard to think of the right things, even just regular conversation. Like, how do I? Think of the, you know, how do I do that in person? How do I be witty in person? How do I do, you know, I know that stuff was hard. You know, I was always the person who was soft spoken. Like, I'm not going to, you know. Yeah. And so it's like, that's where I realized, okay, I got to really look deeper into it. So I had to, you know, I, you know, obviously I had a few more times with, with women. It was pretty interesting stuff. Like, uh, and then I ended up, there's one girl who just, I think she just really was into me as far as, she just really liked me, you know, uh, physically, and that ended up like eight months. It was a lot of, a lot of ups and downs with that stuff, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was, you know, but that's where I really started getting the vibe. Yeah, so did you obviously? So mm-hmm. about the about the uh the whole like the insecurities thing, right? Because yeah, that, mm-hmm. that's something that I can't really relate to the average person on, and it's not because. Okay. And it's it's only because like I'm a very witty person, like very witty. Person. Right. So like it, in person, it's like yeah, I can think of the, I guess you think of shit on the fly. I'm fucking good. Right. I pride myself on it. Right. right? And yeah. so it's like I I completely understand. Are you still at that point now to where it's still difficult for you, but you're working on it, or how did you overcome that? Yeah, uh, you know. So I, I've realized that a lot of it, and this is leads to my biohacking point. A lot of it is really based on how you're functioning, like you're. Your state of your state. A lot of people say state. Some pickup artists say state, mm-hmm. but it's like your, you know, your 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 neurochemistry in the moment. So when I and that's and this also ties into just sexual function as well. Being good with that, you know, I was like, you no know, one. You know, one of the first things is like our testosterone levels, right? It's like that's a big issue. That, you know, that every, all these guys are going through, right? And so it was like. There's that. There's things like dopamine, obviously. So if you're, you know, fasting from from PMO or you're, you know, you're taking a supplement, you got ADHD, whatever, maybe you on some meds or whatever. The point is, it's like a lot of just, and that's just a lot of general mental health stuff that will help you be able to not only have better self-talk, but be more grounded in the moment and reduce anxiety. Um, And, you know, there's things like... uh, now, some people, you know, there's there's drugs that kind of reduce anxiety, which, you know, focuses on your GABA receptors, stuff like that. Um, and I've tried some of the things as well. But a lot of what that does is that frees up your mental real estate. When you can free up your mental real estate, it allows your brain to work quicker. So then it's like you can actually be, we're all witty, you know, we're all witty deep down. It's just whether our brain allows us to be that or not, you know. And so a lot of it is like that. A lot of uh, you know, you have some sense of positive confidence. It's just in certain circumstances that trigger you, right? And this will ultimately lead to the unconscious. It's like you're not you're not able to use that that part of your mind like you would, you know, like you want to in the moment, right? And so you you kind of feel like you can't do it or you don't know what to say or whatever. But the capacity to do that is there, you know. So that's what. I think it's kind of a hopeful message because it's like if you can kind of overcome some of those things or do some, you know, whatever internal work that has to be done to resolve that, you can kind of show up as that person that you would want to show up as, you know, 
Mm-hmm. And so it was like, yeah. I was going to say, just to double that, double down on that point, this is very, very powerful. Because one, if you guys watch some of my content, I always talk about writing down who you would like to be. It's yeah. very important because if you write down who you want to be, then you start asking yourself, what are the actions does that person take? And the reason why you have to mm. ask yourself those questions is because it's right. through those actions that allows yeah. you to be confident in being that person because you are uh, everything that that person is. And so the, right. one of the things that we were talking about earlier that has to do with this is the psychological battle of going from that blue pill to that red pill. That same mm. battle takes place from going from who mm. you are right now to who you would like to be. And so when mm. you are starting to become this individual, it's very important that you allow yourself to be this, mm. this uh, individual. Because one of the things mm. that I, I'll talk about this, about one, about wit, being witty, mm. and then two, about being like a masculine man on a date and then knowing what to say. A lot of guys say like, oh, what do I say? What do I say? Or what do I do? A lot of the times you have no clue until the moment arises. And here's right, how that's the way it should be. Right? Yeah. right. Here's mm-hmm. how it works, right? You're doing something and then you'll see this tiny little voice or this tiny little inkling, this nudge will tell you to do something. When you yeah. have that, yeah. you have it's like literally, instinct. Literally, it's, like that's, yeah. it's, it's literally instinct. You have less than like two seconds to take to take hit on it. it, it yeah. And what, usually, what happens with most guys is it'll say, "Put your arm around her," and then they'll think of fifteen different scenarios of why right. they shouldn't or what's <laughs> yeah, going to really. go wrong. And it's, it's like, yeah, you missed your window of opportunity. Versus if yeah. you're talking to somebody like me who's been on retention and, and is following that instincts, very tuned into the moment. They call it being present, mm-hmm. right? right? The moment I get arm over her, I'm arm over her because my yep. mindset is yep. first, first of all, I'm a guy that's attractive, like a guy that could get laid. And two, mm-hmm. whatever happens after I do this, I am fully prepared for the consequences. A hundred percent. Exactly. And it's like, if you yeah, don't have that type of mentality, a, mm-hmm. it's going to, it's you're going to ruin, you're going to get in your own way. And so I like when he said exactly. that your brain allows you to do it. It's really you're giving yourself permission to do it. And, and so that's you a, like that's a, with right? That's a deep, like what you said there, like about, you know, it's, it's like that's a deep, um, that's kind of ultimately why I want to lead into the, I can lead more into the black pill, but that's, you know, like you said, that belief deep down. And I think that's, that's really the key because that's where even the insecurities lie at. Or where your confidence collide, or your self-esteem, and I think a part of understanding that is realizing that it's a it's the unconscious that kind of deals with deep beliefs and stuff. You know, your your mental health, you know, your neurochemistry can aid or aid or or go against that, but usually the foundation is the unconscious mind because that controls like ninety plus, you know, ninety five percent, you know, plus percent of your behavior, right? And a lot of that stuff is ingrained, you know, from the stuff you've gone through when you were younger in your past, right? Mm -hmm. This, you know, this is what led me to looking into the unconscious mind. And and it's like, okay, well, if this is where the deepest issues rise and where these anxieties come up, a lot of these things, ultimately there's a program in your head, right? And it's and it's, you know, that's where the self-talk stuff comes, right? Usually when you feel good, it's usually more positive. When you feel bad, usually it triggers more negative thoughts, right? And so it's like, you know, if you didn't get enough sleep, stuff like that, you know, okay, those things are going to affect how, you, how you're talking to yourself, right? But the main thing is like, is it even possible to get down there and resolve that stuff, right? So it was like, that's what kind of set me into, okay, you know, you know, you know, how do we do that, right? So anyway, this is what kind of brought me to where I'm at, you know, now in, in like the, the black pill specifically, you know, and I've always been kind of looking at their stuff from afar, but it's like, you know, and, and kind of relating, obviously, you know, I've had my dark moments. So it's like, I've struggled through that for a little while. And it's like, okay, I'm seeing where, you know, their sentiments make sense. But at the same time, there's this ultimate problem of they're just cutting themselves off from the solution altogether. They're like, well, there is no hope. And I'm like, well, I've never been that kind of guy. You know, I've always, Mm -hmm. like, I'm the kind of guy that's like, okay, I'm philosophical. I got to figure this out, whether I go to my grave and not, you know, figure it out or not. You know, and so for me, it's like, okay, well, you know, I want to figure this out, you know. And so it's like, you know, I'm realizing, you know, okay, well, there's this, 
this self-belief deep down, you know, and it's like, that's what allows you to a, a person on a, on an unconscious level. Like they don't have to think about it. Right. You're just in the moment. You're confident. Right. When something is thrown your way, your response is, is, is much better than, you know, somebody who's doesn't have that self-belief. Right. And that, that, that makes the difference between the guys who are winning or, you know, their players or whatever. Right. And the guys who are right. And it's not just, you know, it's not just looks. Right. So that's the other part that, like, I'm real okay. For some reason, the black pill only focuses on oh, well, these these immutable things, these external immutable things that you know they can't control. And in a certain kind of way, it's like, well, they're no better than the, than the women because it's like they're not being introspective. They're not recognizing the importance of you know your mindset and your overall energy, confidence, you know, and how that kind of leads to your success as well. And the black hole kind of prevents them in a, a certain kind of way from, you know, kind of getting into that. And so, uh, yeah, so I was going to say, like, you know, I, you know, I started, you know, I started, uh, what I like to do is, I know you say like a diary, right? And I, I write like a lot of notes and stuff, or you say journal, but a lot, what I've done, you know, for years, I've always naturally, I'm, I'm, I naturally talk to myself. I used to think that was weird, but you know, it's just kind of how I, you know, what I do, I'm always talking to myself, you know, usually I'm in a car, I'm, you know, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing Uber Eats, whatever, you know, and I'm just, you know, it's kind of my sanctum where I'm processing through things, right, by talking out loud to myself, and then I usually record it, so it's how I come to a lot of, like, epiphanies and stuff like that, <clears throat> and so one of the main things is, like, you know, it's like I realized, you know, as I've been looking into the unconscious, you know, I've been even looking into, you know, psychedelics now, you know, uh, hypnosis. I haven't tried it yet, but, you know, looking into hypnosis, you know, I'm trying to, I want to become, you know, certified in that myself. Uh, but deep down, it's like, you know, you know, what is this trauma? What is this thing that is kind of in our unconscious that's sabotaging us in different ways? Because in a sense, that's that's really the original sin. You know, that's really the that's really the the problem that most people have, right? Um, whether it be addiction, whether it be all kind of stuff, it's going to track back to um, that you know that part of yourself that has been kind of shaped in certain ways. Usually, when you were young, when you couldn't really, you didn't have as much information, right? Your brain was neuroplastic. You know, you didn't have as much of a higher level of function. You know mental functioning yet and so everything was kind of being impressed into you and i think this is also a place where a lot of black pill guys i think this is what creates the black pill is this over catastrophization because they probably grew up and, and like i said for me i wasn't i had good parents i didn't really grow up in the hood or nothing like that so i didn't for me it wasn't that big of a, a struggle for me but I know there's a lot of guys out there who kind of grew up in situations where their parents were, you know, assholes to them and stuff like that. And everybody around them is an asshole. This also leads to their inability to trust anybody, right? And so it's like, okay, well, if they, if they're, you know, they're looking for help or they're looking for, or they're not looking for help, right? And I think a big part of that is number one, ego. And then Number two is like they don't trust anyone, right? and so that that silos them off into this belief system called the black pill because it's like okay, well I'm you know, you know it makes me feel good because okay I'm, maybe I won't die with, but I want to die right, you know I might you know and so as long as I can die right you know I'm going to be able to protect that ego right because we all have that in us and. Sometimes we'll serve that over, you know, you know, at, at, on the one hand, I'm flirting with suicide, but on the other hand, I don't want to go through an ego death, right? And it's like, because the ego death would, allow, would open me up to the help that I need. Okay, let me, you know, you know, I, 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 I post comments in a lot of these, you know, black pillars, you know, comment sections and stuff. And it's like, you know, I say, you know, whenever I offer some kind of suggestion or solution, it's like, oh, you're gaslighting. Oh, X, Y, Z, you know, right. And so, it's like, so they don't even, yeah. So let me, let me ask you this, right. Cause we talked about mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. 
where you say yeah. that the whole like journal thing, do you personally have a journal or no? Uh, I just have, I don't have a physical one. I just like use notes on my phone. So I have like, so I've been using that for years. So I have a whole bunch of notes in there. So listen, the yeah. one thing I tell every guy is you need a physical journal. A physical journal, right? A hundred percent. And here's here's the thing, right? And I'm gonna say this till I'm blue in the face. I'm there and there. I've been saying it since I'm blue in the face. It's because it's one of those things that a lot of guys are like, oh, you know, it's just something that's like, eh. But it's not right. getting a getting a physical journal and writing things down is going to act ultimately change your entire life because uh, what the journal does is it allows you to be at structure right what what AZ uh, what knows when we were talking behind the scenes and just trying to trying to get structure together it, when I was talking and again correct me if I'm wrong when I was talking to him he was talking but it was like all over the place I call it an organized mess to where it's. <laughs> Yeah, like we understand what we're saying. It just took us yeah. 20 years to get there. Versus when yeah. you talk to me, I'm step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Right? Yeah. And the and reason no, why notes, I, notes help me do that for sure. Right. And the reason yeah. why I'm able to do that is simply because I have a journal. Now, a lot of guys, they tell me, it's like, oh, I have my notes app. And it's like the, your phone at any moment could get lost <laughs> or, to, or done. And it's, it's over. Yeah, that's that All of the wisdom that you've acquired over the years is gone immediately. Plus you and back it up. You yeah, back it up. <laughs> Hey, hold on. Even if you have a dead battery, if you have a dead battery, yeah. it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. You can't write. You can't write your thoughts down. Me, I have a physical journal because I I carry my journal everywhere. If you guys meet me in mm -hmm. real life, you say, "Where's my Where's my journal?" I'm either gonna have it on me or it's gonna be in my car. That way, if I ever have any thoughts, I'll probably put it in the notes app, but then I'll transfer right. it to my journal. Okay, I'm telling you guys, there is something kinetic about writing things down. That again, because you're talking about right now where you're in your life is you're talking about the subconscious mind and hypnosis. Let me tell you mm -hmm. something. The only way that you're going to be able to penetrate either of those things is with repetition. Repetition mm -hmm. comes in for forms of writing. So when I, yeah. when I tell you guys, like have a journal, it's not because I'm like, oh, you guys should write down your feelings. It's because I'm working with the conscious mind, the subconscious right. mind and the unconscious right. mind. OK, right. And so that that was that was number one. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, pretty much if you don't have a journey or not in the game because and, and let me let me do this right let me just kind of put this as, a, as an example i want to put you on the on the uh the hot seat right mm -hmm. if you if you could tell me what are you focusing on uh the next year of your life could you tell me that so the next year uh mm -hmm. so yeah i'm trying to i want to pay my business so yeah right now i'm just like i've kind of broken it down to you know i'm like i said going on my own healing journey myself and then you know i want to move into training you know and then i want to uh do some kind of program that helps you know helps you build your business so that's kind of like the big you know picture of it so now i'm trying to like you know i'm breaking each one of those down and uh yeah i'm just yeah trying to find you know just a lot of research like okay what's what's the best thing for me out there and you know yeah just kind of making those practical steps as well you know so okay. i'm kind of constantly revising that yeah okay so you said that you're breaking it down where are you breaking it down at um so yeah like, well like i said I'm, I'm, i don't have a physical journal so yeah so yeah i just i gotta you know i'm breaking it down on my notes and yeah so it's that and then yeah and then, I'm, then i'm just kind of the the, the thing the different the interesting part about like doing the like, recordings is you kind of like sometimes it's catharsis, but sometimes it's like it helps you work through things, that, or at least for me to talk it out with the kind of the emotion in it. But at the same time, I'm also trying to dig down to the solution. So usually I'm, I'm processing both emotionally and, you know, kind of um, as far as, you know, just what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out at the same time. So that, that's one benefit to recording it too. But yeah, like, and then I'll listen back to it and I'll kind of, you know, I can get even more ideas on based off of that. But uh so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And so what I want what I want you guys to understand is like when, when I asked him that question, that's what came out. Okay. That's what came out. Now what I'm gonna do is if you ask me the same questions, it's like, what are you what are you trying to do? Right? Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and break out my journal here. And let me tell you guys exactly what is what I'm trying to do. It's like, so, so what MD, what, what is it that you're trying to uh, accomplish this year? 
I have three main goals this year. Generate $3,000 a month from YouTube, travel, and, and travel at least 60 days consecutively out of the country, remain disciplined and I can barely read my own handwriting, remain disciplined and invest in leveling up my daily routine, create school community and content and run ads to fill the community, which I've done. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I have, I've broken it down. You said he's broken it down, but it's nowhere else. It's, it's not, it's in his, maybe it's in his notes app, but it's not in the physical journal. But if you ask me to break it down, I've broken it down. So my health section, I know that I need to be diet focused on my macros and my micros. I need cardio and full body movements. And I need to be lifting heavier weights for my wealth. I need to be, you see what I'm saying? Like I could keep going on and on yeah. and on. So if you, if you guys ask mm -hmm. me, if you ask, if, if I have to take a debate and I'm like, which one of, which one between me and him who has their life more organized is not even going to be a debate where it's me. And this is not me trying to beat my chest and be like, oh, I'm a masculine guy. Yeah. But what I'm saying is it's like, this is your masculinity. Masculinity is point A to point B. And so if you're lacking in the foundation, because this is the foundation of where you're trying to take your life. So if you're lacking in the foundation, then it's like you're lacking in your masculinity. So now I want you to imagine that we both have families, okay? Mm -hmm. So we both have families. I have me and my wife. He has him and his wife, and we both have children. If, if we go off of just our masculinity alone, who do you think's family is going to be more organized? Who do you think's family is going to understand that they have a clear objective and, a and clear goals? Is it going to be me or is it going to be him? You see what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. <laughs> So this is, this is, and again, this is not me trying to belittle or do anything. This is me telling you guys, like the, the journal is, is extremely important. I was about to curse. The, the journal is extremely important. It's really, really, really hard hard hard. <laughs> because it's the foundation. It is the, yeah, I know. Right. It's the foundation <laughs> of the freaking of your life. And so you have to have yeah. that shit written down because if you don't yeah. have it written down, you're, you're wandering or you're guessing. Mm -hmm. And so, and again, the reason why I, I'm even saying this to you is because I was the same way. I, I, you said you talk to yourself. I do too. As far as like mm -hmm. my thoughts, I challenge certain thoughts. I'm like, where did that come from? What is that? Mm -hmm. What are the right? What are the bases between it? I like, okay. State your argument. Like, I want to know like right. where these thoughts are coming from. I want to be conscious right. of myself. Right. And then I would even yeah. like, like, again, you, you're, you're new to the, the masculine development uh, channel, like roughly like three or four months. I've been on this thing mm -hmm. for the past, like two something years done over like 500 videos. Right. And mm -hmm. all of those videos were me doing what you were doing, which is explaining my thoughts and coming to certain epiphanies and things of that nature. And so I completely understand where you're coming from when it comes to stuff like that, because it's extremely mm -hmm. important. However, when I, well, however, that is of what I would say is the feminine. OK, because right. just to give a, a, a quick mini lesson for the guys who don't understand, the feminine is limitless energy. Anything and everything mm -hmm. is possible in the in the feminine. Right. We yeah. The feminine is you can talk, 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 talk. This is why if you ever talk to women, for the most part, they don't talk about anything. Right. At least right. you've seen groups of girls talk. They don't talk about anything. They just talk, 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 talk. There's no point. Mm -hmm. Versus if you talk to men like masculine men talk. They're like, I went to the store. I was like, I wanted to get a, a sandwich. So I went to the store. I bought meat. I also bought some bread, some mayonnaise. Then I went home and then I made a sandwich and it was really good. Boom, 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 mm -hmm. straight to the point. But if yeah. you're of the feminine, you just talk, talk, talk. Like, oh, well, I was going to the store and I decided to get ready. And I didn't know which clothes I was going to wear. And then it was blue. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm not going to go blue. And blue reminded me of that time mm -hmm. where I went to Six Flags and we looked at the sky yeah. and it was so blue. Six Flags. Oh, you went to Six Flags? Yeah, we got a good deal. You could go do it from Groupon. Speaking of Groupon, Groupons, we could go, well, I was <laughs> skydiving. That, that's where it leads to. You're going to keep going and going and going and going and going. Yeah. Right? So again, I implore you. And again, take the advice or don't, but it's, the, it's the single most important thing. The highest mm. ROI thing I've done in my life was get a journal because it tells you exactly what it is that you're trying to do. So whenever you're having like a mental overload, you just check that mm. journal and it grounds you again. You said that you yeah. were kind of struggling with grounding, right? Yeah. Right. And so this thing is designed to ground, it grounds you. Yeah. And like you said earlier, that's super important is you said that you learned that, um, to, to understand who you were because you need to free up mental real estate. Yeah. The journal is exactly what that's doing. It's freeing mm -hmm. up mental real estate. I don't think about what I have to do. I don't think about my future. I don't think about this because mm -hmm. it's already in my journal. And so I freed right. up all that space. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah. again, so just, just my last point here is like that, it's extremely important. I know we went off on a little tangent there, but bro, journals are, oh, yeah, are yeah, freaking yeah. life-changing. And, and I, I can't wait mm -hmm. till you guys meet the 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 my men's group because I'm, i plan on having a graduation day at the end of the year where i have mm. everybody the i can i can almost guarantee that every person who you're going to meet if i say did a journal change your life they're going to say yes 99 percent of them because it does mm. all right okay so that that's enough on my tangent <laughs> <laughs> journals 
Yeah, All right, bro. So kind of kind of ring us back. Where are we at? We're at the um you said where where are we at? Yeah, well, I was just kind of laying out my kind of my, my understanding is so far kind of on the black pen mm -hmm. where that ties into my interest and what I'm trying to do. And uh um yeah, it's just like let me okay, I wrote a few points on. Oh yeah, so yeah, and, and again I'll oh go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, and I was saying, you know, obviously I was saying, you know, I think a lot of them in their environment, they grew up um in an environment that like I said, didn't give them those that affirmation at a younger age, you know. So it was like a lot of traumatic beliefs were kind of set into place as well. And I think a lot of that colors, you know, on top of maybe they're neurodivergent, maybe they're not as attractive or as tall as they, you know, whatever, whatever they you know, they might have been dealing with. And they grow up into this world, obviously, today where we've got all this, these media messages, particularly with the black pill. And they get stuck there because it's like it, it, the unconscious mind likes confirmation bias. And so it's like, um, there's, there's certain ways that um, other hypnotherapists, and, you know, have kind of broken it down, but there's this, the mind is like a company where it's like, you got the unconscious mind, you've got the, um, the emotional mind, you've got the rational mind and the conscious mind, you know, roughly speaking. And so it's kind of, the unconscious mind is, designed to make decisions as quick as possible, right? You know, based on the survival thing. And so it's like, you know, it's it's only going to look at what's similar and not what's, what's different, you know, because it takes more processing. So it's like, okay, well, if I'm, you know, if I'm this, this, this because of my upbringing and then they're telling me like, you know, it's over, it's, you know, for, for me, it's X, Y, Z. It's like all that stuff connects to, you know, it, it connects to that, right? It makes sense to them. And it's like, okay, yeah, this, you know, so they identify with it. They kind of make that uh, their identity. But it's a bit of an over-catastrophizing, you know. Uh, you know, um, it's not, I don't think it's really as bad as we might say it is or we might think it is to the point where it's like, oh, well, there's no hope. But, you know, they only focus on that aspect. Oh, hold on, hold on just a second. Okay. And so I'll, I'll kind of take it from where, where he was talking about where the one of the things that I actually want to uh, discuss is it's very important that as you as a person who's on your self-improvement journey, one of the things that you want to do, I know I remember I wanted to do this, which is kind of the whole reason why I started masculine development in the first place was because I got to a certain point in my masculine journey that I wanted to give back because I wanted to focus on the version of myself that just needed help. He just needed the information. He just needed a helping hand. And so I was like, you know what? To give back to those who gave to me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole bunch of videos helping these guys out and then uh, move on. And so a part of it is, and, I, and I've heard this from a, from a guy, I couldn't tell you who, but the advice was sound. He said, you want to focus 33% of your energy into people who aren't where you are, helping the people get up. You want to focus 33% of, of your energy of the people who are around you as far as who are on your same level, networking and things of that nature. And you want to focus 33% of the energy onto uh, people who are above you. So when you walk into the rooms, you're the poorest person there or you're the dumbest person there. Or you're not, you know what I'm saying? So you want to you want to have a healthy balance. And so where he's at, I personally, what I believe is I think that we're at a point to where it's like, okay, we're at this level. Now I want to go try to help other people. And that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, one thing that I've learned being on this journey for over three, four, five years now is simply that you can't help people who don't want to be helped. And you've kind of already witnessed yeah. this whenever you yeah. started whenever you go to these uh the the black pill comment sections and you put right. something down they just say that you're gaslighting here you are right. trying to live a helping hand to help yeah. these people get out of a situation that's leading them to complete and utter darkness damn near self deletion and you're like here's a helping hand and they're smacking your hand they're biting the hand and so th that if you go through that enough which uh, trust me I've been through it a lot it actually starts to piss you off because it gets you upset because it's like, why am yeah. I, I'm just trying to help you, yada, yada. But the thing that I've learned is, is you, the reason why they slap your hand away and things of that nature is because you're willing to invest more into them than they are willing to invest more into themselves. Exactly, yeah. And people yeah. do not respect people like that. It's like people wow, who try yeah. to love other people yeah. before loving exactly. themselves. They can never accept yeah. it. 
Yeah. So go, go ahead, bro. Yeah, you said it right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's also like an ego thing. I think chicken guys are going to the library. But we'll we'll see if they get me another room. But uh, yeah, I, I might have to get up and we'll see. But yeah, it's that's a de exactly what I'm about. Yeah, what other thing it is? It's also an ego thing. It's like they want to protect. It's you know, it's when you're a man. It's like and that's it's kind of like that's the only thing you have, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so it makes sense, you know. They want to protect that ego, but it's like, you know, they don't want to find. They don't want to use that to find either find us. It's like you only have a few options, right? You have either take your own life, cope to where you're not complaining about it, and you're just kind of all right. But that doesn't have neither. They're ne they're never able to do those two things, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, the only two things left is either kind of, you know, do something about it, or like kind of change your beliefs about it. You know, change, you know, fix your, you know, Absolutely. like I said, what your ego is holding on to, right? And 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 be open to help or change. And yeah, just yeah. So uh, that's that's one of the big issues with that. A hundred percent, man. It's like they, a lot of guys, they just want to sit around and complain. They're happy there. And that's what I had to realize. Like I'm going to have to walk away from these guys because they're not actually trying to improve themselves or get out of their situation. They just want to cry and complain and moan about it and make people feel sorry for them. When it's like, no, I'm not going to feel sorry for you because like we, like we said that about that story earlier, when I listen to black people or black people, <laughs> when I listen to black pill content, what I see is that, um, they're they're very at the they're very at the, at the they're low leveled they're low leveled as far as where they're at in terms of experience so I'll, I'll give you guys an example one of these one of the guys that i was listening to a long time ago he was basically talking about him and how this girl walked up to him and like gave him his number um he got into an altercation and then what ended up happening like afterwards this girl walked up to him gave him his number and I was like, I was like, oh my God, like, wow, that's like a, you know, for somebody who has his uh, demeanor and everything, that's crazy. And so he's texting her and he's like, bro, he's like, I don't know what to do. He was like, I just can't see why this girl likes me, yada, yada. I'm like, see, that's immediately, he's already getting in his own way. He doesn't believe he deserves anything. And then he was like, so I just went out and sent her a text of like, bro, like, why do you, why do you like me? Why are you trying to do that? And she texting about like, um, like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, cause she's a woman. Cause she doesn't, what do you mean? It's like, what are you talking about? And so you right. see how these guys are leading themselves into self-fulfilling prophecies of right. the, the the black pill mindset, and it's like the reason the th the difference between. Oh, I gotta I gotta leave this room real quick. Huh? Okay. Me, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead and mute yourself. So the 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 difference between A Z here and other people, and I and I hope you guys caught this was there was a point he did it all on his own and had no type of social tools or anything like that to make it happen, but then. Then he decided to invest in himself into a coach and that coach grabbed his hand and walked him step by step by step by step until he got the result. And then once you got the result, he can let your hand go. And then you you're off with you're off doing whatever it is that you want to do. So this is this is exactly what I realized. It's like you can't help people who don't want to grab your hand. OK, the only re the only people that you can help are people who are willing to stick their hand out, for, uh, willing to stick their hand out and get help. And again. There's a lot of guys out there, especially the guys, a lot of guys who email me, right? There's a lot of guys out there who you ask people for things selfishly and you're not willing to sacrifice to give to them, okay? Sacrificing in terms of money, sacrificing in terms of time, sacrifice in general. And so again, so again, it's like you, you want to ask yourself when you're in the real world, you ask yourself, how can I benefit this person and how can this person benefit me? Because that is a relationship. You understand what I'm saying? And so what a lot of guys do is they're like, hey, bro, can you can you uh, mentor me for free? And I'm like, bro, you want to go to work for free? No. Right. So it's like, what are you talking like, talk about? A lot of guys will say that you shouldn't charge things. You shouldn't have a course. You shouldn't have mentorship. You shouldn't have any of these things. I'm like, but you don't go to work for free. Right. So if your boss called you into work tomorrow, it's like, I'm not going to pay you anymore. You're not showing up tomorrow. Right. But I thought you wanted to help the world, bro. I thought you wanted to leave an impact, bro. Go ahead. Just go work for free. Or or, or are you or, or is that ridiculous? Right. So it's like, have that same respect for people who you're reaching out to. Okay. So I, I, I want to mention that. And so this is like, this is a really great story. I'm not sure if he's still, if he's trying to find his room or, or, or something right now, but um, I'm just going to say, I, I, I'll mention this as he's, uh, as he's going. So right now it's the, it's 10, 14, 2024. I'll probably upload this either tonight or tomorrow or the next day. 
Um, but what I want to, what I want to mention guys is right now, what I'm going to start doing, start preparing for the end of the year, because the amount of results that I've gotten or like we've gotten in my men's group have been astounding. I, I freaking love it. And I can't wait to have uh personalized interviews with each of one of them. That way I can show you guys that, that this thing works. Like this isn't just some, some baloney. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking uh pre-orders now. Uh, for guys who want to ultimately change their life. Because again, like you, you guys saw in the journal, in the journal, I wrote down everything specific of what it is that I'm working for. If you understand exactly what it is that you're working for, I've broken it down to even the actions that I have to take on a daily basis in order to make that happen. You follow that pl that game plan for 30 days, you're going to get results. You, you follow that for 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, you're going to get that result. Especially when you have weekly accountability of somebody getting on the call with you just like this and say, okay, bro, tell me about last week, what happened? Let's go ahead and talk about the mindset. Why not this? Why not that? And so if you find value in that, uh, I highly suggest that you book a call with me. I'll have the link down in the description. Uh, book a call with me. That way we can see if you're a right fit uh, to join the group. And of course, of course, please don't be uh, childish about this. Uh, this is not free, okay? And so don't don't think that this is not this is gonna cost a hundred dollars for a whole year. It's not, bro. So again, if you're if you're serious, uh, book that call. If you just want to have a conversation with me, book a consultation, okay? All right. So th that that's what I want to mention. So okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it. Yeah, so it's, you know, um, yeah, I think, that, you know, so, you know, you can't help somebody that wants to be helped. I think that's a, a big, a big problem because, um, you know, the unconscious mind, it kind of gives you it. Like I said, you know, earlier, it was like you ha it kind of has this confirmation bias. So it's like it doesn't want to it's harder to change things that are kind of set in place. Right. Um, and, you know, they have this they've committed to this specific way of looking at themselves and the world and stuff. And, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, just, it, it also feels comfortable, right? So it feels comfortable. It feels safer, right? Because the unconscious mind, uh, likes safety, you know, because it wants to keep you alive. Right. The, the, and, and they say like the brain isn't like really the main goal of the brain is not to allow you to thrive, but to just stay alive. Like, like that's kind of how we energy. evolve, right? And so, like, in order if you want to if you want to go beyond that, you kind of have to you kind of have to do more things consciously in order to make that happen, you know? Because otherwise, it just it wants to, and, and so that's also part of part of a part of what ties into the ego part of it. So it's like, you know, there there's some sort of survivalist like satisfaction in protecting the ego, and so it's like. You know, I don't, you know, what I'm going to say, it, it's, it's, it's like they don't, they want to protect that because that's one of the last things that they feel that they have, you know, because mm -hmm. they, yeah. you know, okay, I'm, I'm right about this, you know, there's other people that, you know, understand, you know, like, you know, okay, you know, you know, obviously if I don't fit in, I'm an outcast, you know, okay, but, you know, but I do, you know, but I have this black pill, you know, ideology, or whatever. And so now, you know, I have an ability to kind of assert a bit of, you know, confidence over things because, okay, I understand it. Even if it means I lose, well, at least I know I lose, right? It's like, oh, I know I lose. So it's like that makes me more confident because I have that, you know, I have that knowledge. Right. And so that's the only yeah. thing I'm sure about that I can. Win. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's the only thing I. Right, that's the only thing I can win at is losing, and so it, they kind of just they just loop on that, and yeah, it's it's like the, you, maybe they can't die right, but they or they can't die winning, but they want to die right, right? And so it's mm -hmm. like that's essentially what I was saying before, and it's really and just that, a, a, a ego protection method, you know. And just kind of having yeah. this conversation with you, it, it reminds me like, like it, I don't even think this sounds harsh at all. I think it's like a survival of the fittest thing. Where it's like, uh, know, it's, whether we like it or not, besides the people who have like accidental deaths and stuff, there uh, is going to be a group of people out there who do not reproduce. No matter how you slice yeah. it, no matter what. There's, and yeah. I think that th those guys have, because they think they can't take the identity of anybody else, they're like, you know what, uh, I'll take this and I'll, and I'll, right. I'll die with this. And it's like, right. bro, it's like that. That's why it's like it's so hard for a lot of us to understand. Like, I get it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't. It's like, bro, if I've seen, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying these are these are less than people, but like, bro, yeah. I've seen special needs people 
yeah. people who have real <laughs> conditions be in relationships. Right. And so exactly, it's like, come on, yeah. like, 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 what are you really missing? You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like that's why but they it's can't. Like, they don't, they don't see that, right? Like it's like that stuff. Those those evidences exist, but it's like they don't. Uh, you know, their mind won't allow them to take that in or see that or 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 there's just some ex, there's just an excuse for it right it's like oh well mm -hmm. they had this or they had this and and a lot of them say when i you know it's like oh well you don't you don't know my you don't know what i've been through right so it's always like well nobody you've never walked in my shoes so therefore you can't truly you know help me or whatever or you, you've never walked in my shoes so you can't really give that advice right and it's like there's well, okay well how has anybody been helped well some people have been helped you know like some people have been helped and nobody knows their life completely nobody knows anybody's life completely that's not really a right a reason for why you can't be helped you know be helped you know by somebody else and i think a lot of it too because there's a lot of older guys you know who are who kind of identify black people it's like oh i'm i'm 30 plus and i'm there's also ego there where it's like okay you know I'm this old and I should have been gotten here in my life or I should have figured this out. Right. And it's like, they haven't. So it's like, I surely can't let, you know, you know, I surely can't let anybody tell me what to do at this point, you know, yeah. cause now maybe, you know, so it's yeah. like, I, there's probably some of that there as well. And yeah, it's just, and of course, the older you get, the more set in your ways you get. And, and, and it's and, just and like, yeah. You're, that you're right. And I think that's, that's extremely important because one of the things that, you mentioned that I agreed with because it's a lot like my character in, in a different shade where it's like you, you said that you're, you're not you're like, you can't be a pessimist. You can't accept defeat. Like you, you, you're a thinker. Yeah. You think about philosophy. Yeah. So you, you yeah. know that there's like some type of solution out there that yeah. you're going to, you would rather die even, trying yeah. than not trying at all. Exactly. I think yeah, that's even what extremely I, important mm -hmm. because what I, for me, I believe in like, you're down by like, let's say we're playing basketball, right? And you're down uh -huh. by like, 10 points 20 points and everybody yeah. starts going home like they, they have these moments in sports all the time where the other team it looks like they're just like they got washed or nothing's happening and then it's like that last second but not even the last second like the last quarter or the last five minutes something like a string uh -huh. of i don't know what happens <laughs> but you're able to like tie up the game and sometimes even right. win i live for those moments in real life right. oh right, my, right. i love i love them yeah. and it's like it's the joy of that where exactly, it's like most, yeah. now most times, most of the times it's like, okay, statistically speaking, it's not going to happen. But when it does, oh man, that's the thing that drives the shit out of me. Cause it's like, yeah, it's like, yo, can you imagine where it's like mm -hmm. you, you, you're out and you'll, you, you might have this if you're a type of guy that did cold approaching, like what uh -huh. I did back in the days, you'll, you'll get blown out like freaking 10, 11 times. And you're right. like, you know what? I, I'm done, man. I'm like, I'm good. Right. And you decide yeah, to and, 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 there, mm -hmm. and there's like this one girl. It just fucking it just made it all worth it. You're like it was so yeah. much, like she made your whole night. And it's like yeah, right. That's the, right. That's the game. You're gonna go through a lot of suck yeah. ass, but at, at some point, bro, it's like you're gonna get something, and that something means a lot to a person who mm -hmm. doesn't have anything. You know. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I, you know, I'm kind of like I'm trying to. That's why I look as deep as I can, like to figure out, like, like you know, like what are the because life is short, right? And it's like, what is the ways that we can get as many things out of our way as possible because the more, the better you, the, the better you can get at just being who you authentically are, the the more you're going to get to whatever you, you know, as the alpha that you need to be right. Or whatever it is, right. That's yeah. that potential that's inside of everyone. It's like, you know, you want to get that out of your way. And so it's like, yeah, it's like being able to, you know, and, and, and repetition, Petition is also a way to do it. You know, cold approaching will do it. It's just, you know, over time, like you will be able to, you know, change how you're thinking, right? And then there's some guys who go out and they approach and it just kind of tears them down more. Or it, mm -hmm. it like it like it like solidifies more more of their their trauma, right? And so it's like I think that's why kind of coming at it from this advantage point is gonna be really key for a lot of guys out there you know, at least those who are open to this stuff, right? And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you know, and, and a, a lot of this also ties into kind of some of the philosophy around like Nietzsche and um, you know, some of it, like a lot of it is just like, you know, obviously there's a lack of vitality in the in the, in the the culture today, like testosterone and stuff like that. And 
you know, but I think there's also that breakdown, the social breakdown, um, you know, and all of that, you know, just especially when we're raised, you know, when we're raised when we're young, we don't have that anymore in society. And it's it's like that's that's so crucial, those those periods of time. And and then you've got, you know, the powers that be technology kind of raising them as they get older. And it's like, yeah, it's just like we're just kind of putty in their hands. And, you know, and so while there's some people who are trying to use the Internet to their benefit to, to actually become what they want to be, there's others who same Internet, but they get on there and they find a black pill and then they, just, they don't, you know, they don't. That's it. You know, and it's like, well, wait a minute. You can use the same Internet to find, you know, you know, you know, like helpful your situation. Right. And it's like, why not do that? Right. But it's like, okay, well, then there's a mental block to here because clearly everything they need is is here. But it's like they're not even seeking that out, right? And and obviously, I, you know, so, yeah. That's, that's the thing, right? Because the world is made for people who are actual action takers because yeah. there, there's not one piece. Again, I, I like to think about it like this. Like we're 28, but if you remember like our grandparents – our grandparents had to get everything out the mud, mm. everything out mm. the mud. Right, there right, right. There was no mentors. There well, were no young. coaches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. had to, those were like, you had to know somebody who knew somebody. And even right. then it's like, you you had to get around the right people. You didn't, you couldn't just mm. stumble into a room. There were no online yeah. events that you can go to. Right. right, so right. When I think about that now, it's like, there are so many, ex there are so many excuses that new guys make that is absolutely mm. gross. Because it's like, one, unless you're a person, like people who grew up uh, on the internet as far as like, um, like if you're a TikTok generation, like Gen Z, I feel oh, kind yeah. of bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like, bro, they're, they're in a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah. it's completely gone, you know, versus us. I mean, my, we, I kind of grew up on the internet too, but it's like, ooh. But, but, yeah, but again, even... for us, you remember the internet when it first came out. It was like, it wasn't as dense as it was now yeah, for us. Yeah. So if we wanted to look at, let's just say like pickup artistry back in the uh -huh. day, there was like five, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't 50 or 70. Right. Or there was like, <laughs> yeah. there was like a, a couple names that a lot of us know that if you're in that space, you know exactly what I'm talking about versus now yeah. there's damn, they're like four or 500. And so it's like yeah. a lot of, that's where it's like, we grew up on the internet. We grew up, I say in the age of information to where right. everything was accessible. And because uh, it was so relatively new, there wasn't very many sources that can give us conflicting ideas. Right, Versus right. Nowadays, where you have a, a, a you have two ideas, then you have two ideas that conflict those two ideas, then you have two more yeah. ideas that <laughs> conflict those two ideas that also conflict yeah. the other idea. And it's like if you could get lost in a sea of, of information, which nowadays right. there's so many accounts out there who are just promoting bullshit. They're just right. promoting, there's a lot of scams too. They're, they're lying yeah. for fun. I've seen creators right. do it. You know what like I'm they saying? make a whole so, business out of scanning, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. and so now that doesn't like, help a lot of these guys because that just gives them another excuse. It's like, oh well, exactly. I got scammed, well, whatever, and it's like. But and, and the thing yeah. is, the other side of it is the the guys who are doing like there's no there's nothing that you a guy can say to me at all because all you have to do if you're texting a girl right and you're like oh I don't know what to say next all you have to do is open up Chat GPT and tell it oh, the yeah. conversation. <laughs> your right. goals of what you want and it's gonna it, it's gonna give you a whole detailed plan that you just follow yeah. step by step by step and it's like so it's like i can't yeah, even i can't even bro. all right somebody's working on it somebody one of these uh game guys is working on the a gvt that i really give you a good like bro, you know that, you could just that's the thing about you you just created your you just create yourself i'll go yeah. in there right now but like, bro you're a dating coach you're helping me yeah. trying to get laid or you're helping me try to get more numbers or you're helping me fix my instagram this, yeah. You can even give it your Instagram. You can say this is what it <laughs> this is what it looks right. like. And the, this is versus the guy who I think is attractive or his Instagram looks like. What are some noticeable differences? Mm. It's gonna give you a plan, bro. And so like that's yeah. where it's like I don't I nowadays you there is no like what do I say because Jet GBT can give you an unlimited things amount of things to say. What do I ask her? Chat GBT it. You know what I'm saying? Even in the moment, you could take it on the go. And ask yeah. AI, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't. That's why it's like most guys. If you're in a good, if you're in a good space of the internet, and you have like a coach or a mentor that's able to guide you mentally, it's like, bro, you're gonna crush because everyone right. else is trying to do it by themselves. So and, and and just to kind of towards the end here, unless we're trying, unless you have something else to say, what the one of the things, the very pivotal moment in AZ's life, 
is the moment where he realized that he needs help and he got mentorship. And after that mentorship, everything started changing for him as far as the better because he was accomplishing things yeah. that he wasn't used to be able to accomplish. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it was like, for me, it was like, you know, because I'm like, okay, I'm, I just want to figure these things out and be who, you know, the person that I've always envisioned in my head. And it's like, you know, and obviously I started off Christian. It's like, okay, well, that's, this isn't, you know, like he's not, nothing's really happening with this. And it's like, I had to, after just holding on for so long, just kind of like, okay, I had to give this up and make myself open to, yeah, like another way. Um, and it, yeah, it was like, and that's what allowed me to kind of take it into space. But deep down, it was always like, I know, like, you know, because of like my kind of uniqueness, it's like, okay, I always, always understood deep down. It's like, okay, I, I'm here for a person, you know, like, you know, my, the difference in, you know, my personality and stuff like that. Okay, I have gifts that, you know, obviously I'm experiencing this struggle here, but, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, I got, I'm here for a reason, so I got to figure this out, you know. And I think, uh, I think if a lot of these guys could somehow find within themselves, like, you know, you know, I, I like to say this, like nature, nature saw fit for you to be here. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. That's what I like to say. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's like, and it's like, use that as a state of a place of hope. Like, you know, like my genes are here for a reason, you know, what, what am I here to, you know, what am I here for? Right. And it's like, if you can dig into that part of like, okay, there's something about me that's different, but it's valuable. If you can dig it, if you can find that and dig into it, then it's like, that's something you can like fight for. Right. It's like, because that's what you're going to, you know, you got to fight, right. You got to fight yourself most of the time. And then you got to fight, you know, obviously the world that you think is holding you down. It's like, you got to, you know, if you're between death and, 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 and continuing on or killing yourself and continuing on, you have to find that thing in, in you to fight for, you know? And I think it's like, if they can kind of dig into that, you know, you got to face your pain because a lot of times, okay, well, I'm just going to cope. But that's, you know, obviously that ain't working either, right? That's why they, they still complaining, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, you know, so if you're going to, if you're going to stay on this planet, then, you know, what is it that you're going to fight for that you, that's within you? Because it's there. It's in every one of us. That's why we're here. You know, even the person who is short or the person who is, you know, you know, if they've got a defect or whatever, there's a reason they're here, you know? And it's like, if, if you can tap into that, and then, you know, have that purpose as well. But also all these things that we've been talking about with, you know, biohacking and then the, uh, the un, you know, kind of the unconscious. And it's like, if you can kind of tap into this stuff and really resolve these deeper issues for yourself, you know, you can, you know, this is where things are going to really start to kind of move forward, you know. And like I said, having that purpose, allowing that to drive you into action and drive you into, okay, what's, you know, how, where do I got to go? Right. And then, you know, it'll give you a sense of conviction, right? Once you found that, and it'll give you something to fight for. And then everything else will start to fall into place along with your confidence, your ability to go into the gym. And, and because you've got a, you've got a, a long-term, you know, thing that's, that's driving you forward. And yeah, it's just like, you know, I, I can't, I've never gotten to that place where I've been suicidal. You know, I've been, very depressed and stuff and stuff like that. But, you know, for whoever's out there like that, it's like, you also got to realize that even, even the stuff that you went through, it's not over. Yes. The brain is neuroplastic up towards like 25 and, but there's ways to make it neuroplastic again and then get back in there, you know, and kind of resolve things. And it's like, once you realize that this trauma that you're projecting onto the world through the black pill that maybe you've went through, once you realize that, well, you know, it's no longer there, right? The things that, you know, when you were a child where you couldn't do anything for yourself, you literally couldn't, right? And you're holding on to that in adulthood, not recognizing how much agency you really have. And it's like, once you understand, like, it's that, that environment that held me down is actually no longer there like I think it is. I have more control than I think I have. And really all, all that, it's only in your head, right? That those, those whole, whole, those setbacks are really only in your head. And once you realize, okay, that trauma is only in my head, that means I can, it's that easy, you know, how much more easy is it if it's not in your environment, you know, like you're over catastrophizing it, as I said, well, if it's just in your head, then you can get it out of your head. 
and then you can actually see the things in front of you that you can do externally to make things better because they are there, right? You know, and so, you know, obviously you have to be willing to let kind of let go a little bit of this this black pill nihilism, you know. But yes, yeah, it's, it's just once you realize the power that's in your head, right, in your mind, then you can kind of, you know, get on track to bringing that into your control, you know, and the first step is like awareness and then kind of acceptance. And, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, that's, that's really what it, what it boils down to, you know, um, be, be willing to say that, you know, like you have it, you know, a lot of guys say, Oh, I've, I've tried it all. Like, I've, you know, again, it's kind of an ego thing. Well, I've, I've done this before and it didn't work or whatever, you know, and it's like, Hey, but you know, it still doesn't mean you shouldn't reach out to somebody who can help you. But you have to, like I said, get out of your own way in that sense. And yeah, I mean, once you can do that, the internet changes from this place where it's like you can't do anything to like, wow, look how much I can do, particularly even in this age that we're in, you know. Um, so yes, it's it's uh, yeah, it's just it, it it changes everything once you realize you have something to fight for within yourself, you know, that if you do certain things, you can make your situation better you know you can improve some things and that will get you better results you know it's not like it's just over there's it's a it's a scale it's a it's a, a spectrum and like i said a lot of it does boil down to your you know your mindset about it your energy so at the end of the day we want to be around people who are have a good a good energy you know have a good um you know just vibe about themselves especially women right they could ch you know obviously they're they will like the looks but it's like if you know how to make a person, the deeper part is the emotions, right? You know, it's like you want to influence people's emotions, you know, and you can do that more through, you know, your personality, your confidence, your energy, and you will become more attractive in that sense, you know? So, you know, it's like you, instead of seeing things in that rigid way, yeah, use what's, use what's there, see all your options. And like I said, I think their, their pair of mind just can't see that because of like i said these unconscious things so that's why i'm you know that's why i'm trying to you know because i'm just fascinated with like psychology and psychology i've always been like even in school like i would always do better in my electives with like you know philosophy and s philosophy of psychology and stuff like that or philosophy of mind and, you know because really you know consciousness is life it's our experience here and it's like you know without that you know it's like you don't have any of these things. And so understanding that and how that works is like what I want to be able to do. And it also connects to like what I want, you know, I want to get back to the music, you know, cause that was part of big part of my purpose, especially through high school or through, through undergrad that got me through it was like, I'm really good at rapping. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I haven't been able to do that because I've been just struggling to, you know, as far as jobs and stuff. And so, uh, you know, my goal is to create a lifestyle where it's like, okay, I can, I have the, the time and the flexibility to be able to, to get back into that, and then that ties into yeah, just helping, you know, healing people through my words, through through sound, through my words, and just being able to, you know, get a different program into people's subconscious, you know, because other than what's going on right now, a lot of this world today, culture today, music, you know. You know, you even got Kendrick like getting mad, like what's going on, bro? <laughs> like what's going on? Like you know, this this uh, yeah, we're just we're lacking that culture today because a lot of a lot of our society is kind of crumbling, and yeah, it's like I want to I want to be able to tie that passion and that interest in, into this stuff, and you know, in the mean, you know, along the way, it's it's just gonna it's gonna make me better. It's gonna you know, so. I think that's another interesting thing. If you can somehow tie your passion and your sense of purpose and what you want to do to something that's going to also develop you or, you know, kind of make you into the person you want to be, that's even better. You know, because at the end of the day, we just want to, we want to help people, you know, like, you know, that's what I really want to do with anything. I, my, you know, as far as my creativity, anything, I just want to, you know, I want to limit people's suffering, give people the strength so that they can, go through things and not see it as like a, you know, they, they see it as something that's going to make them stronger rather than 
tear them down, you know, and then they can actually weather that. They can be strong. And like I said, be masculine, like uh, like we've been saying, and a lot of guys in the space are saying, and you know, that's possible, you know, for at anybody's level, they can get some kind of, you know, success. So, you know, and it's worth it, right? But uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I was like, I will say that I will say like uh, I appreciate you for coming on, uh, just yeah. having that whole story of you know going from being a virgin to twenty four, um. Getting that mentorship, getting that help, realizing there's a whole other world out here for where you can start being the leader of your own your leader of your own life and putting yourself in position to win. And now yeah. it's like it looks like you're at the point now where it's like we want to focus on winning. Uh, we want to focus on finding winners, but we also want to focus on helping the people where we were at uh, mentally, or at least around the realm where we were at mentally. And so I really I, yeah. I applaud you. I applaud you for that, bro. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to say to the people before I let you go? Oh, that's really it right now. Like, like I said, I'm just on my journey. I'm my goal down the line is to have you know get back into the music. And I had like a, a Instagram up, you know, you can follow it if you want, but I probably won't be, I won't be back there maybe for another year or so. But you know, it's you know that's my ultimate Go goal. Go ahead and, and your uh, Instagram if you want. Uh, you can, and if you want to reach out to me personally, you know, if you want to, you know, just talk or whatever, have some advice, you know, I, you know, could do that, but. Uh, my main Instagram is uh, Ozzy Graham 24 or at, uh, so A Z I G R A M uh, 24. So you can reach out there, or you can follow, like I said, my my music Instagram. Um, it's it's, it's actually goes by Spin Image. Um, it's like it's spelled S P T N and then I M I J. Um, and it's kind of the whole you know music philosophy I got. So that's what it's called, and and if you if you type that in, or yeah, S P T N I M I J. If you type that in, the Instagram it should come up. You'll see this like kind of cool symbolism. It looks kind of like the yin and yang symbol. So there's a lot of deep stuff behind that. But yeah, if you look at look that up, it's black and white. So yeah, if you look that up, you know you can follow that, and or if you follow me on my main thing, you know you can, if you want to talk to me or whatnot, uh, that's cool. And awesome, uh, yeah, man. and uh, probably down the line, I'll probably have content myself, but that's later once I kind of have my own business going or whatever right like you know, yeah awesome guys and so if you you guys are a subscriber of the channel and you want to tell your story you want to have a conversation with me email me let's see what it's about and let's see if we can set something up okay uh like i said i appreciate yeah. you again az for joining us and uh having this conversation and uh yeah, yeah. Man, let, let me know when you drop some music or something like that we'll, we'll showcase it on the channel and uh yeah, yeah i wish you the sure. best man I'll, I'll talk to you later yeah yeah